Good morning. Happy Monday. So even though it's a holiday weekend, um, it's still Monday. And I contacted my clients. I took the time for myself over the weekend to think about what health goals I want to work on this week. And this week I got a chance to go take some walks with friends, um, with my cousin who's battling with cancer. And you know, walking with her and hearing that she's going completely plant-based and she's changed the way she, she eats in the last year and has lost weight and you know goes to her doctor's appointments and gets really great news. So, um, you know, it, we, that's what it's about. It's about us doing things for ourselves to be healthier. And here, and here, and here. I mean, really. Um, one of the things that I've been working on slowly is my morning routine. And this week, this month, is something that I said, you know what, I guess it just hit me or it starts, pieces start to come together a little bit more. And I made myself a little chart last week. And I have to say, you know, um, I think I have it here. You know, for me, oh, it's probably going to be backwards because I didn't change it. Um, but for me, these are pieces that I have been working on or have thought about. And I wanted to bring it to everybody's attention here. You know, I think many people who, turn, who tune in are thinking about their health and thinking about maybe food differently or trying intermittent fasting, plant-based eating. And to me, I see that's pieces of it, but a lot of where I learned that from was like changing my mornings too. And so, you know, the idea of, of making time being tech-free was huge for me. And, you know, when I realized and you know, you read it in books and you see it yourself and you, you watch, you know, YouTube videos and you're like, okay, yeah, the first thing I do is I, I grab my phone when I wake up. And, you know, when I was a kid, that wasn't like that, right? I mean, my poor kids, they don't even know the world without that. And so I started to take a little time in the morning um, and just be tech free and make that my time to do me. now. Some people think it's insane that I get up at 3 o'clock in the morning. But for me, when I train people at 5 a.m. or 7 a.m., and yes, COVID you know, brought it to 9 a.m. and then back to 7 and 5, but um, it gives me time in the morning to work on me. And so, you know, I my morning routine, I'm basically giving you my, it, and I'll actually Put a copy on or see if anybody's interested because my clients actually saw this this week and they were like can i get a copy of that one since my email um so basically you wake up you wake up early and the idea behind it is there's a certain time there's a certain amount of time you need to sleep and if you wake up early and you do these six to eight i put some more in there to tailor it more to me and activities, this is what people do, and all of a sudden they get more time, and they get, you know, they, they hit their goals, and they learn a lot more, and they try different things. And to me, when I was reading this book called Miracle Morning, I was like, what? You know, like, what do you mean people do this stuff in the morning, and all of a sudden, you know, um, the day goes a little bit better. And what's really funny is a few months ago, um, I went to a conference and I'm sitting there and we had to talk to people around us and it was like a tough subject it was one of those things like I really didn't want to have to tell anybody what was in my head but I was like alright so I turn around and make eye contact with this guy and I'm like okay so we go back and forth and we both tell something that's just really was kind of like whoa okay that was a moment and I said, you know, I wake up early and I, I do these things. And he goes, oh, Miracle Morning? And it was like, what? You know, um, for me, it was something that when I came across that book and I realized putting these pieces together or helping my clients put these pieces together in the morning, right, will just help. If you put a little meditation in your day, 
your food choices are going to get easier, right? Now, I mean, if you stretch, your workout's going to get easier. Like, it was a no-brainer to take a little time in the morning to do these things. So, I wake up early. I take a shower. Hydrate. I mean, I never really understood or realized, like, when you wake up, you're dehydrated. And that's from sleeping and not drinking water. And so, when you wake up and you, you know, kind of just rehydrate yourself right from the get-go, you don't, and you're not chugging along, you know, you're not sipping on your coffee and then maybe having a sip of water. You are taking it in quick. And so, I'm not 100% on that. I've been doing it pretty well, but not great. And then, um, singing my theme song. I, I feel like that's how I start my day. And um, the story with that is at the same conference, a different day, there I am listening to this young guy who I had chatted with. Um, and he w stood up there and started to talk about a song that he that meant something to him and was in a whole bunch of, it was like the whole idea of being like a, a warrior and just going tough and just doing it and just letting things go and all that. And he starts to bring up this song that happens to be one of my absolute favorite songs. So there I am, like tears in my eyes, listening to this, ki this kid singing my song, talking about how, you know, it, this conference thing has changed this world. And I'm like, I think I need a theme song, you know. And to me, it has been something, some days I sing it twice. My kids actually have been like, you know, Mom, I hear you. And I'm like, it's okay. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm not the best singer, but I do it every morning. And it really does. When you can sit there and say, you can't change your past, but, you know, and let it go, move forward. First thing in, in your head, within the first half an hour, why not? Right? Um, vibration plate. That is something that I was never, it, it, I tripped over it many times in my bedroom for a while. We were told that it was really good things to try and do that. I never made it anything consistent. And so I started, I was doing these 30 day challenges, you know, and I did plant based, I did meditation, I tried some other 30 day challenges. And I was like, you know what, I don't think I've given this thing um, a fair shake. And so I got on it and I added it to the things I was doing um, for that next month and for 30 days I did it. And what I found is by the end of 30 days, I was a lot more flexible. There was pain that I did have that I didn't have anymore. And so what was 10 minutes in the morning? So I added it into my morning. Um, massage rollers, you know, um, I go from my vibration plate, I have it all kind of set up in a little area, and I go right to my rollers, and I take the few minutes that my neck goes, ah, uh, and then I get off of it and I feel better. I mean, you know, when, I say this all the time, but when people come to me or people talk to me and they say, oh, I'm in so much pain, you know, do you stretch, do you use a massage roller? Do you try doing these things first, you know? Um, and to me, my goal is to be out of pain. You know, right now I stand here and I have a little back pain and I have my arm, shoulder, you know, going numb a little bit to my fingertips. But I work hard on just maintaining that at times, you know? And sometimes as the weather gets hard, you know, colder and, you know, nastier, my body feels it. So that brings up to what I do for myself food wise, right? I I brought someone around today to Trader Joe's and you know when you think food is medicine, you don't really think putting it in the microwave. Or if you think food is medicine, you know, you don't think maybe, you know, fake crazy butter might be the answer. You know, like there's when you think food is medicine it heals you, and I think it truly does. Um, I mean, I don't know. I would rather take my chances eating real food than boxed food and, um, and see what happens there. So one of the things that I do, and you know, in September it seems to be in my head, 
I mean, I do it whenever I feel like I'm not run down or whatever, but now that everybody is going back to school and, you know, the world is trying to figure out what's next um, for myself, this is where I really kind of like try to do those extra things for my health to stay healthier so that I don't get sick. So even if it's whatever, I don't get it, right? So um, one of the things that I, I came across years ago was just this concoction of real food that like went, oh, that makes sense, that could heal you, you know, oh, that's good for you know, your, your intestines, oh, it's good for your you know, cholesterol, ginger, lemon, you know, um, not ocean spray, you know, real cranberry, like the stuff you don't want to drink at the moment like this. But cutting up ginger and lemon, you know, cinnamon I put in there. I do put turmeric in, and I didn't bring either of the roots, these teeny little things that look like larvae, and I've, I've um, played around putting it in my kids, around my kids when they were a little bit younger, I scared the shit out of them. Um, but then I boil it all. Um, sometimes I'll put orange in there. And I let it boil down a little, you know, enough where I drain all the fruit and I take it, I put it in ice cube trays, I'll stick it in the freezer, um, you know, I'll pour it into my seltzer water throughout the day because I drink seltzer water often. And, you know, if you need something sweet in there, honey after, maple syrup, you know, I don't mind it bitter and with the fruit, I, I, it tends to sweeten it up enough for me. And one of the other things that I'm doing right now is for inflammation, turmeric is, is really known to be good for that. And um, again, Trader Joe's makes like this crisp easy and it's got uh, three ingredients in it. Um, ginger and turmeric, let's see what else. Let's see what else. Licorice, orange peel, and organic black pepper. So everything on there is organic. No, I must have cut it. I know. Um, but it's a nice tea, and this is a time where I'm actually trying to drink less coffee, even though I drink it black and I don't drink all that much. It's one of those things where I don't know. I'm just curious if I need that much. So I've been doing teas a little bit, even with this. You warm it back up and just you know cut it a little bit with hot water. Awesome. Um, I also just wanted to show you, oh, I don't even have my coconut cream. Hmm. Oh, I will show you this. This is my, one of my favorite trees. I am, I'm slightly addicted and it's got organic, um, let's see, a guava syrup. There's a few ingredients you're like, eh, but it's a treat. And um, I would like to kind of learn how to make it on my own. But if you're looking for what I look for, these two labels right there. To me, those are standards that I understand to be as good as they can be, being that um, the USDA is government ran and the um, non-GMO is actually a non-for-profit that when GMOs became part of our food, they started to kind of regulate themselves on it. And to me, that's like a standard that I, I agree with. Just because it says non-GMO or says organic, if you don't read the ingredients, you'll see what they do is they can have a certain percentage not organic. And as long as there's a few ingredients that is, then then they can sell it and write it on it. But it doesn't mean that it has, um, that it's all, you know, been approved by the USDA. So I just wanted to show you a little bit of food, a little bit of morning routine. And I, and I see these as pieces, you know. I have people who work with me. I sat in front of somebody 
um, a few days ago who jumped on months ago and has been on his own journey and he's a musician and he lost his son at a very, very young age and he's just changed his world since. And there he is telling me that, you know, he went to the doctor and like, because his numbers are coming back and it's just super good. And to me, that's what it's about. So, um, you know, that is fasting, uh, chatting with somebody, talking about fasting. Sometimes our, our thoughts are, well, I eat one meal a day or, you know, I, I, I hold off for this time or whatever. But you, you need to make sure that you're going, your body is going into ketosis. And sometimes, like, if you're drinking coffee with sugar and milk or, you know, if you're not drinking black coffee or water um, till the time you stop fasting, then you've broken your fast. And that's how I see it. The one thing that um, I've done that I didn't know is a dirty fast was putting lemon in my water, which had so many other benefits. If you look up what a lemon does to the human body, it helps your pH. It, it, it's, a, it's a natural detox. You know, I mean, I'd rather do this than some kind of weird powder that says it's a detox. Um, so I was putting lemon in my water while I was losing my weight, while I was fasting, and it was never a problem. But more recently than not, I've learned that it's considered a dirty fast. And people, some people don't do that. Um, and I think that's it for today. I'm sorry if I rambled on too much. But I do hope that some of this helps. And tomorrow, I know it feels like a Sunday. We've got Monday. Tomorrow, I'm going to go most likely to Whole, whole Foods. And on um, Tuesdays, I've been doing like a field trip. So the last few weeks, I've been going to Trader Joe's and either meeting friends and clients there or jumping on and doing like an online Facebook um, kind of, hey, these, these, these are good products and why. So um, if you're interested in, in checking that out, I am going to